Look at that face. She's smiling. You know why? Because that's Maggie Doyne, founder and CEO of an organization called Blink Now. The other thing about Maggie is that just a few hours ago, she was selected as the 2015 CNN Hero of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. How amazing is that? It's Unbelievable. The whole last 24 hours has felt kind of like a dream. It's surreal. We're doing the show right before Thanksgiving 2015, and literally, my note said that you were uh, one of the top 10 CNN heroes of the year, and our executive producer, John Eichland, said, wait a minute, this just happened. <laughs> you were selected by our friends at CNN as the hero mm -hmm. of the year. It just happened. <laughs> That's, the, how much money is that? $100,000. Oh, that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell folks what this means, and by the way, Tell everyone what Blink Now is and, and why it's so important. Well, when I was really young, about 18 years old, everyone around me was going to college, and I'm from suburban New Jersey, so Mendham. that's kind of, yep. You and Chris Christie. <laughs> You're more famous than he is now. <laughs> Go ahead. And uh, at the very last moment, I decided to travel and kind of take some time to find myself and figure out why I was here and what I wanted to do. Fast forward you know, 20,000 miles, and I ended up in northeastern India during the civil war that was happening just northeast in Nepal. And uh, I traveled to Nepal with a backpack when I was 19, and I saw many, many orphan children, and I hated orphanages, hated them. And I just thought to myself, well, why don't I create a home that I would want to live in if I were in that position? So I started a children's home, and now today I'm the mom to 50 kids. <laughs> well, you just can't say, it, I'm a mom to 50 kids. Because <laughs> it just didn't happen like that. I look good, right? You, you look good for having 50 <laughs> kids. Uh, tell us about these 50 kids. Well, um, you know, we have an orphan crisis in our world. There's an estimate at about 100 million orphan kids. And for me, being that young and growing up in a very different reality, I just wanted, I don't know, to try to do something. I'd ha where are these kids? Well, I was in northwestern Nepal. Explain to folks, because people don't really understand Nepal. Most folks don't understand. It's, How bad is it? It's, it's pretty remote. It's the most food deficit region of the entire world. There's an estimate one million orphan and abandoned children. It's coming out of a civil war and an earthquake, a lot of natural disasters, and just impoverished due to the fact that the Himalayas are there. So you have villages that are days and days walking from the nearest medical outpost or school or civilization or road. So it's a very remote region of the world, which makes it really difficult for women and children there. So to be the quote unquote mother of these 50 children means what? Well, I go through the legal guardianship process for each of them. My oldest is now 17. I've had her for 10 years. And my youngest is 18 months, so I have the whole range, everything in between, the teenagers to the middle years to the babies. How old are you? I just turned 29. You're kidding. <laughs> we have so much in common. <laughs> you, you, just, you really just turned 29? Mm -hmm. I've been at it for about 10 years now. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> blink now. The name. In the blink of an eye, we can change everything? Mm-hmm. Can we? People I say, you can't make a difference, you say. We have to try. We have to start somewhere. You know, like, I'm just a normal, average girl who grew up in so, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what, I guess that's why I like to share my story, because I didn't know that this would happen to me. If you had told me I would become the mom of 50 kids, I would have never believed you in a million years. But I remember I was walking across this dry riverbed. I don't know how I ended up in Nepal, but I did. And I saw hundreds and hundreds of kids breaking stone. And that was their reality. Every day, all day, just breaking rocks. And I just thought, well, I can't do anything about these hundreds of kids, but how can I do something for one? Wasn't there, was there one kid in particular? Wasn't there a six-year-old mm -hmm. child that you saw? That was Hema. Yeah, Hema. that was the six-year-old and the first girl that I ever enrolled into school. Did she have a particular impact on you? Yeah, she... What did you see in her? She just smiled at me, and it was this big, bright smile, and she said, Namaste, Didi, which means big sister, and she was playing in a heap of garbage and trying to look for food and breaking rocks like that, and I was just like, look at how different we are. 
But culturally, you're there, you're trying to be helpful, but you don't <clears throat> look like people there. They don't look like you. When you were saying, I want to do this, were there people who said, no, you're not going well, to, I don't want to be with you. Did you get resistance? It happened really, really slowly. I think that's the key to remember. I learned the Nepali language. I'm fluent now. And I have a whole Nepali board of directors. We're now a team of 100 people. I'm the one who's from here. but Your it's... nonprofit has a board. Mm -hmm. It has a staff mm -hmm. with and... an annual budget that runs. You're, a, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, so it's a huge like movement now. And this community that was once unable to care for its children has now stepped up and, and they're doing the work. We have a women's center and a nutrition program and a medical clinic and a school and it's all Nepali run. And we dreamed it up together and we built it together, which is I think what makes us unique and able to make the change in this community that needed to be made. How did the CNN Hero of the Year award change your life? Well, it's $100,000 in, in our pocket and... Well, you said in our pocket. Me and the kids. Yeah. What do you think it means? Well, one, I think it'll share a story and just get more people to realize that education is the path and it's the way. And you see all this mm. violence in the world. And to me, I look at the violence and I think mm. it, those are kids. Those are children that weren't raised with love and food and nurturing mm. and education. And of course, these cycles will continue to perpetuate and violence and poverty mm. will continue. So we have to stop it. Mm. What I'm curious about is this. Um, you're 29 years old. You're an incredibly young woman um, who's done so much. And you're also making a lot of people feel guilty right now for so little we have done, in all seriousness. Mm -hmm. Do you ever say to yourself, there are other things I want to do with my life that more traditional or normal? I, I, like dating? <laughs> like, like dating. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Why? Um, well, I mean, there are definitely things that you have to put aside. Like, I'm not going to have a family in a traditional path in Menlo, New Jersey. Probably not. This is my life now. But I'm really happy, and I love what I do. And I go and I talk to kids and people, and I say, go find something that you love. Do something that makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning. And how about the kids you went to high school with? They're all in with you? They are helping me a lot. They have all come out, all of my friends and... And family? Your, your blood family is like, hey, Maggie, the, you're doing a great thing? They're the best. I mean, in the beginning, it was hard. I started with babysitting money. They were like, what are you doing? You're supposed to go to college. But now my sisters come out, and my mom and dad are really big supporters, and it's become a whole movement. You are amazing. Thank and I'm you. not one who likes to use that word because I think it's just incredibly overused in society. You are amazing. Thank you. And we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you Keep so much. Keep doing what you're doing. I will. I okay. will. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by United Airlines, Investors Bank, Holy Name Medical Center, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, Partners for Health Foundation, and by ADP. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.